All right. So the class of the Hall of Fame, uh, 63.2%, Raka and Perez, 63%, the beauty pair, 62.9%, Sergeant Slaughter. I feel like ever since I've been a subscriber of your uh, of your newsletter, that the Hall Sergeant Slaughter has been a discussion for like almost every year that I've been a subscriber. So it's kind of crazy to see him in because this I I remember long pieces and podcasts and everything about Sarge's career. And finally he gets in mm -hmm. uh, Jack and Jerry Briscoe, 61.3% Tomohiro Ishii, 60.9% blue Panther, 60.6 and right on the nose at 60% George kid, who I'm not sure you ever thought was going to gonna actually make it. I never thought he would make it. When I first put him on the ballot, it was because he deserved to be on the ballot, and I voted for him every year once I learned about him. I only knew the name. I mean, this one is um, Bradley Craig, who actually wrote the article on George Craig in the new issue. So it tells you who he is. Um, you know, he had... Um, it was really when, I, when he was inducted into the Scottish Hall of Fame, and he was the first inductee, and I was kind of like reading about him, and it's like, God, this guy's like a clear-cut Hall of Famer. You know, I knew the name. I knew he was a great wrestler. You know, I knew he was a great in-ring tactician, and he was the the forerunner to Johnny Saint, who's another great wrestler. But um, I didn't know about his whole career because, um, you know, I mean, it ended in 76. His prime was in the 50s and 60s in the UK, which, you know, in the United States, you know, there wasn't like a lot of coverage of the UK in that era. And, um, you know, he never came to the United States because he was so small, you know, and again, we didn't have small wrestlers at that level, you know, at that level working in the United States. And, um, you know, I mean, but, you know, when studying George Kidd, he, to me, he was a slam dunk and I voted for him every year, but I never thought, and one of the good things about the hall of fame balloting this year and other years is you can really see people have studied people they don't know. And those people are starting to do a lot better. And George Kidd getting in the hall of fame to me is a real um the fact that he could you know because I, I thought rock and perez were, were going to get in no matter what i was stunned when they didn't last year i couldn't even understand it but you know it didn't happen and it was close you know when it's that close it's kind of like well they'll probably get in next year which they did and honestly i thought that they would get a higher percentage this year too but but you know they made the cut um but yeah george kidd like literally came down to the last vote um you know, I mean, one less vote and he's like 59.9% in that uh, or whatever, 59.8% and um, not in. And um, but then he probably would have gotten in next year anyway. But um, yeah, yeah, the um, that was the, that would be a surprise. I was not I, I can't say going in that I was expecting anyone. I thought Rock and Perez and Beauty Pair would probably get in. Um slaughter i knew you know he's always close i knew he was a contender um can't say that i expected uh slaughter to get in and the briscoes i thought would be borderline i thought they would certainly be close they were close last year ishii i knew would do well but i didn't know that he would i didn't know that he would get in um and he got in by a very small margin but ishii is um you know ishii's a groundbreaking uh entrant to vote it in because I think he's the first one who was voted in for ring work um, and for having great matches for so many years without being, you know, like, like at least like Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero had their token time on top as world champions. You know what I mean? Um, you know, which helped them get in or Jushin Liger was IWGP junior heavyweight champion, you know, more times than anyone and, and was the king of the junior heavyweight division all over the world for years, you know, like got, you know, I mean, there are many guys who have gotten in with, with their ring work being a primary reason, but Ishii is the one, the first one where it's pretty much, it's pretty much the entire reason. Like, yeah, did, did he have, um, did he, did he a star in the UK on the independent scene or he could, when he, when he comes into WC, I mean, um, AW or in ring of honor or something, does he mean something? Yeah, he does. And, is he really over at Cork and Hall, you know, to the fan base? Well, you see, of course he is. But it's not like if you take away, you know, his 140 or whatever the crazy number is of four-star matches that the guy has had based on everyone. And, and most rating places, you know, I from what I've seen, actually have him a little bit higher than I do. 
but um but you know it still is it's near the top for this era you know right near the top for this era and what he's done in g1s is unbelievable because he's he's never been to the finals but he still had the highest you know g1 scores many many years or and always up near the top with you know again when you're talking about g1s you know every year you're talking about okada and tanahashi and in the old days you know you had kenny omega and you had um you know um jay white and naito and kota ibushi and you know you name them the guys that are in g1 and and he's always with the top top tier every year as far as matches and you know i think that i think that the g1 is really even though his non-g1 record is actually um as far as match goes is is equal to his g1 you know it's not like he's he's one of these guys who has a great august um and then kind of carries him for the rest of the year i mean he's always great but um you know the um yeah what a it, it's 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 good that somebody to me got in based on just decades of having great matches i mean like there's, but, but there's superlative matches you know it's not like it's just great matches he, he he wouldn't have gotten in you got to be way above way above great i mean he's you know again one of the the best guys of of this era when it comes to that i mean very very best so of the folks who got very close uh the dinamitas at 56.8% uh, they were actually down by 0.2% from last year because they were very high last year. Uh, Paul Orndorff. They're essentially the same. Yeah. yeah, essentially the same. A vote off, probably. Yeah. Uh, Paul Orndorff at 55.4%. He is up from 50. And the Young Bucks, I thought they were going to get in, but they just were short at 55%. Uh, you know what's so funny? is before the hall of fame balloting started and when it was going on everybody said you know it's going to be like the topic of a conversation when the hall of fame comes out is all these people getting mad because the young bucks got in and then they didn't get in although they're close and more than anything else the topic of conversation that i've seen is how the hell did the young bucks not get in mm -hmm. it was going to be but it was going to be either way because there's people who um you know, and that's the reason they probably didn't get in is because there's going to be people in both directions that are and why they, you know, came close is because of people who think that they're no question slam dunk absolutely should be in. And then there's the people who think that, you know, for whatever reason that they absolutely shouldn't even be considered. And this is the number, you know, I mean, and I look at it and people go, oh, look, it's, it's I don't worry about people who don't get in. I mean, I mean, I my I'm not really questioning the young bucks because they probably will get in mm -hmm. in time you know i mean you can't say for sure but probably if you debut at that number you're probably getting in pretty soon the one that i look at was is becky lynch yeah you know, to me like becky lynch at 23 percent just um you know it just it, you know i mean i know that that's what she got last year essentially but i just think that women's wrestling has become so important compared to seven eight years ago and she is the top woman star of this era and, you know, main event at WrestleMania and all that. And I just think that, you know, if nothing else, I think that she should have finished way, way higher than, than she did. I mean, there's a lot of people I would say that about, but, but she might be the one that I would say that about more than pretty much almost anyone else. And then, uh, Roman was was kind of the other one that that people were were wondering about as far as the the current stars fifty two point four percent but a crazy jump from last year when he was uh, only at thirty one percent yeah I think that in time he'll get in um, I I mean I I think he's a no brainer I mean you're talking about I know people will go well WWE didn't grow now I mean obviously WWE's grown greatly in the last you know whatever it's been year and a half um, but they'll go like well the other years he was on top they didn't grow which is true you know a lot of those years they didn't grow but when you're the top guy in the business i mean the top guy the number one star probably for over the last decade you know except for cena probably sold more merch than anybody else um i mean i just it's it's like it's like you don't if you're the top like look if if the company has to do great when you're the top guy there's a lot of guys who are in for years and years of being top guys that when the company wasn't doing great and, and WWE was never doing badly. Um, 
and and many guys i mean i just think about like just dusty roads in florida sure 100 percent hall of famer okay but if you go past 1974 dusty roads never had a year in florida where he was hot as he was in 1974 and he was on top there until 19 early 1984 when he went to work for crockett i mean it's it's you know, and it's not, it's like, okay, it's not as big as it was, but he was still on top and they were still doing pretty well. And, and that tenure alone, you know, I mean, when you're the, the number one guy in the number one company, but the, by far the number one company, um, and the company's, you know, not like, uh, you know, the company's doing fine. The WrestleManias do great. The pay-per-views do great. I mean, it's not the hottest period in history. And even now we're not at the hottest period, although we're the hottest period in many, many years, mm. but it's, historically a you know even if it's historically an average period i mean look at you know um you know i mean john, look john cena most of the, most of the period that he was on top wasn't boom period i mean um in fact none of it really was you know he did great with the rock you know on those wrestlemanias and and everything um but it's like it's like but he was on top for years and years and and big merchandise seller and 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 john was a bigger house show draw than roman reigns you know and and a bit bigger merchandise seller but still you know it's it's um but roman reigns i you know i don't want to get you know too much because again my feeling on roman reigns is that is is that like you know he'll probably get in in time um you know even if it's years from now i mean if sergeant slaughter gets in um you know or sting gets in then then roman reigns is going to get in it just may may take one more year it may take five more years um but it's it's like um so it doesn't bother me that he didn't get in but i i think he's a pretty i think he's a pretty strong choice hey if you love this clip have i got a deal for you wrestlingobserver.com you have a commute do you work out at the gym do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.